Are you getting paid enough in your job? A lot of people, they feel like they should get paid more because of extra duties and responsibilities they're doing in their job. In the federal government, you can request a desk audit. This is a review by HR to make sure you're getting paid fairly and it can result in a pay increase, but it can also backfire. So should you do it? In the Defense Health Agency, several nurses got together and they realized they were doing the same duties as GS-13s, but they were GS-12s. The difference in salary between a GS-12 and 13, it could be around $25,000 a year. Obviously, they wanted to get paid fairly, so they requested a desk audit. Turns out, those GS-13s they were comparing themselves with, they should have been GS-12s. And it just wasn't a few nurses. 600 nurses that were categorized as GS-13s, they should have been GS-12s. This was for federal employees in the 0610 job series. Can you imagine how those hundreds of nurses must have felt knowing now that their pay is in jeopardy because a handful of nurses wanted to have higher pay? Now, DHA realized two things. One, they're spending millions of dollars and they shouldn't have been. Two, are they really going to downgrade 600 people from GS-13 to GS-12? They decided not to, but they're no longer hiring these type of nurses at the GS-13 level. They're all coming in as GS-12s. If they did decide to downgrade 600 people, that probably would have resulted in some serious turnover. And DHA, they cannot afford that. A recent statement says, DHA leaders are very concerned the military medical treatment facilities are losing qualified staff to the VA and the private sector. This is a real concern because most of the nursing positions are in the VA. And if pay matters to you, and it matters to most of us, the VA pays more. This is because VA nurses are on another pay scale. This is the VN pay scale. And you can tell by looking at it, it goes over $200,000 a year. The GS pay scale, that only goes up to $191,000 a year right now. The government realizes this disparity and they're trying to fix it. But like anything else in the government, it's going to take some time. Desk audits have happened across the board for all different type of job series. It's just not the 0600 series. Take this example. We had a park ranger. This person was in the 0401 job series, which is interesting because most park rangers are in the 0025 job series. This individual was a GS9. He felt that he was doing the responsibilities of a GS11. So he requested a desk audit and they went in detail towards his position, looking through there to make sure what he did in reality actually matched his PD, his position description. Turns out it didn't match. And a lot of times it doesn't match. Unfortunately, they determined that he should have been a GS7, not a GS9. So not only did he not get the GS11, he took a pay decrease. This is not the desired intent for someone requesting a desk audit, but it does happen. You can go on opm.gov and look through there. It tells you exactly what cases were approved, what cases were downgraded. Now, there are some upgraded as well. Take this for example. Last year, a GS-13 that was in the 0340 job series as a program manager, they felt they should be a GS-14. That's a big jump. GS-13 to GS-14, that could be $30,000 a year. This individual, he was a supervisor. His position description said supervisory duties would cover 30%. This guy was 100% supervisor. The individuals that he was supervising, they were GS-13s. So he had a pretty solid case on why his position should be upgraded to GS-14. They evaluated every factor of this person's job. They assigned points to it. The total amount of points, 3,620. That fell within the GS-14 range. They decided his position should be classified as a GS-14. I personally don't think that you should be in a rush to request a desk audit. Not only could it negatively impact you and your finances, it could do the same thing to your coworkers, right? This is unless you absolutely know that you are working way above your grade and you want to get compensated fairly. We should all get compensated fairly. In that case, talk to your supervisor, talk to HR, and then request a desk audit. Otherwise, like we saw with that nursing situation, it could get bad. If you think you're not getting paid enough in your position, there's one thing that you should be doing, and that's applying. You should be applying each and every day. The majority of federal government positions do not have promotion ladders, meaning that if you're a GS-11 right now, there is no promotion potential to GS-12 in that position. You are going to have to apply to other job announcements, either within your agency or outside your agency. 
You don't have to be loyal to an agency. You can jump from the FDA to the USDA to the DOJ. It doesn't matter. But you have to take it within your own hands. There's so many people out there, GS11, they've been there 8, 10 years. What are you waiting on? Is there no other position around you? Are you willing to move? Where are the GS12s? Look for the GS12s. That is where you should be at. Unless you're just happy with your pay. If you're happy, you're content, then just stay there. If that works best for your life, but most people, they want more money. And you have to go after it and look for the opportunities and apply. You have to take the action to get the result. The result just doesn't fall in your lap. And many people have this idea that the result's just going to get there. Someone's going to tap them on the shoulder and they're going to be like, hey, hey, bud, it's time for your promotion. People don't usually do that. It's very rare. It's the anomaly. You have to take the action. You are also not locked into the job series. Let's say you're a 0301. That doesn't mean for the rest of your life you have to be a 0301. You can learn the skills in that position to potentially apply for a 0343 program analyst. And then you can learn the skills in that position to apply to a 0560, which is a budget analyst. And your boss could have had you train people and now you have experience in training so you can look at the 1700 series. And on and on it goes. Just because you're in one job series, do not think that's all you could ever do for the federal government because that is not true. One of the main flaws I look at when I look at resumes and I've seen hundreds of them there are not enough details in there. You tell me you know how to use Microsoft Excel, but you don't prove it. There's no mention of pivot tables. There's no mention of graphs. Did, did you take the columns and the rows? Did you manipulate the data? Did you present? There's nothing of that. The story is gone. We have a resume with no story. We don't know. All we know is that Bob put down, I know how to use Excel. I was, I was proficient with Excel and I did spreadsheets. That's it, Bob? That's all you're going to give me to work with? You're not going to be best qualified with a bullet like that. With that on your resume, that's not going to cut it. You have to take it to the next level. Now, if you've just started looking for federal government jobs, probably have a lot of questions on your mind about the federal hiring process, usajobs.gov, how do you negotiate your salary? I did a live stream recently. I answered over a dozen questions. A lot of these could be on your mind. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.